Hey Grace Church, my name is Josh. Welcome to the weekly for the week of March 26th. Today we are talking about the Passover. So in Mark chapter 14, we find ourselves on the night before Jesus goes to the cross. Uh, the story is about to start moving quickly and something happens in this particular passage today that is just unthinkable. So in Mark 14, Jesus and the disciples sit down for the Last Supper and Jesus institutes something. Well, first he connects his life to the story of Exodus and by so doing institutes something we know as communion. And this is called a sacrament. So a sacrament is like this typical, normal, natural thing that takes on extraordinary meaning as it connects to a promise God has made. So in the life of the church, we have two sacraments. One is communion and one is baptism. Baptism is you know, being submerged under water coming up. That signifies the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. If you haven't been baptized, uh, this Easter we have an opportunity to celebrate baptism with you. So we'd love to do that. And then in an ongoing way, we celebrate communion. The, the bread and the juice or wine representing the body and the blood of Christ. So these are the two sacraments that we celebrate as a church. And in Mark chapter 14, we see the institution of communion. In Mark 14, verse 22, it says this, While they were eating, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks, and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and once he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they drank of it. And he said, This is my blood of the covenant that's poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink in the new in the kingdom of God. So for us to understand the magnitude of what's happening here, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the story. This is, uh, Mark 14 is referencing the Passover. The Passover shows up to us in the book of Exodus. But as the story is told, it doesn't start in Exodus. It starts all the way in Genesis. When God creates the world, people rebel against Him. These people stay in rebellion against God until Genesis 11, where they're scattered across the earth. In Genesis 12, God makes a covenant with Abraham saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great for the sake of the nations, because the design was always that God would have a people for his own possession. He would have a people that were uh, able to enjoy communion with him forever, but they rebelled against him. So in Genesis 12, you have the, the covenant made with Abraham. Abraham has a son named Isaac. Isaac has a son named Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. One of those sons' name is Joseph. Joseph uh, is the second oldest, sorry, the second youngest of the 12 kids. And in Genesis chapter 37 through 50, you hear his story. Now, without going into it, essentially the story of Joseph is he's sold into slavery. They fake his death. His brothers don't like him. They're jealous. They throw him into a pit. He ends up at Potiphar's house. He's accused of uh, making a move on Potiphar's wife, which he doesn't do. And then ultimately gets sent to prison. He interprets dreams. Again, long story short, the end of the book of Genesis is Joseph being elevated to second in command of all of Egypt. He's the second most powerful person in all of Egypt. Joseph saves the Israelites and the Egyptians from famine. It's a beautiful story. Now the book of Exodus starts with the Pharaoh who doesn't know Joseph. And he enslaves all of God's people. And you read about that. And for 430 years, God's people are enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. And then God goes to a man named Moses, tells Moses to go to Pharaoh, tell him, let my people go. Pharaoh doesn't want to do it. God sends 10 plagues to Egypt. The last of the plagues is called the death of the firstborn. And instead of God killing the firstborn of Israel, he tells them, take the blood of a lamb and put it on your doorpost. So all of this is what's being celebrated in Mark chapter 14, this idea of Passover, that when death comes, it'll see the blood and it will pass over you. Now, we move 1,400 years later from the Passover to the story in Mark chapter 14, where Jesus tells his people, uh, I am going to be the new Passover lamb. Take this bread. This is now my body. Take this blood. This is now what I have spilled for you. And this idea in Mark chapter 14 is the completion of all of the incomplete pictures of the Old Testament. The tabernacle was incomplete. The sacrificial system, the Day of Atonement, the Exodus, all of these are incomplete. And Jesus shows us that He is actually the new and better Exodus. So the, the most staggering truth of Mark chapter, chapter 14 
is that Jesus didn't go to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Jesus went to Jerusalem to become our Passover. He is telling us that he is the one that is going to pay the debt of our sin. And when Christ goes to the cross, in some ways, like Moses told Pharaoh, Christ is telling all of the power of sin and darkness, let my people go. They belong to me. God is on a mission to get his glory to the ends of the earth. And Jesus is setting people free once and for all in the cross. And the invitation is come out of Egypt. You don't have to be stuck there anymore. You don't have to be stuck in the same old way of doing things. I have made a way for you to be free. Uh, And there's also a warning that comes with this invitation. That what Jesus does in Mark 14 is he says this, You're either covered by my blood and you stand covered or you stand condemned. And so for us as a church, like this is a powerful warning for us. Do, Do we stand covered or do we stand condemned? And you go, Josh, how do I get from condemnation to covering? It is simple. Faith. Faith is how you get there. That's how you move from condemnation to covering. So in Mark chapter 14, Jesus offers us the new covenant, offers us his body and his blood broken in our place. And in so doing, the invitation is clear. Come out of, co- come out of condemnation into the covering that I offer you. And we do that by celebrating communion. We do that by having faith in Christ. And hopefully as we talk this out as a house church, we can learn together how to accept the invitation to more and more come out of Egypt and be set free by the power of the cross.